So what you're about to see um, is a replay of a log data which was captured during a amateur radio experimenters group fox hunt on the 10th of December. Uh, and so these hunts always start from the um, Adelaide Aquatic Centre in North Adelaide, which is on a kind of a high rise area. Um, so this is showing the chase mapper mapping software, which I developed originally for high altitude balloon chasing. However, I've since extended it to plot uh, bearing information, uh, both from uh, manually entered data using a small web interface, which you can run on your phone, and also um, automatically generated data from the Kerberos and hopefully soon the Kraken SDR system, which is being shown on the bottom right hand corner of the screen as a polar plot. Uh, the red indicates the data does not have sufficient uh, signal to noise ratio uh, to be plotted automatically. So in this case, I've taken my first bearing. Uh, this was using a Yagi antenna. Um, and it's told me that for the particular transmitter that I'm looking for, which is the 70 centimeter transmitter, and there's three transmitters out in the wild this evening, one on 70, two on two meters, I should be heading towards the western suburbs of Adelaide. So I head off and start heading roughly in the line of the bearing. I'm always very conscious that these bearings are usually quite inaccurate and uh, you know, an error of you know, five to 10 degrees can mean you know, suburbs different um, depending upon where the fox actually is. A common tactic used um, by car hunters well, at least in Adelaide for these kind of hunts is that of park hopping. So pretty much no one has the ability to take bearings on the move. I've kind of got that ability from the direction of arrival, the Kerberos SDR array that I'm using. Uh, but even that, even then I still supplement that with actually swinging a beam. So you really can't do this in, you know, uh, areas surrounded by buildings. So we start looking for parks. So, you know, ovals, uh, large open spaces where we can try and get a reasonable bearing. So in my um, nav system, I'm now heading towards um, a park which I'd previously been to before and knew that I'd be able to get out the car and um, probably get a reasonable bearing. So I've now pulled over at the park and I'm trying to get a bearing uh, using my Yagi antenna. I normally use a seven element Yagi antenna and an ICOM IC705 uh, for taking bearings, at least initially. Um, in this case, I was getting some weird results out of the seven element Yagi. So I actually go back to my car and grab out my backup three element Yagi and get what I think is a, um, a better a bearing from that. So that, that's a bearing that is fairly consistent in direction. I'm not getting you know strong signals over a wide range of directions. I have now plotted the bearing on the map and it's telling me that I'm probably need to be heading a little bit further towards the south. Uh, and at this point, I'm also realizing that in that general direction is the location of the Amateur Radio Experimenters Group club rooms at the Fulham Community Center. And given the person that hid this uh, transmitter, I already, it, it gave me an idea where the transmitter might be, but I still had to confirm that. Now, from the beginning of this hunt, I had the Kerberos SDR system tuned to 439.4 megahertz, which is the transmitter frequency. And as I'm driving along Henley Beach Road, um, the signal in my threat receiver, so that was an ICOM IC705 attached to a vertical antenna on the roof, was getting stronger and stronger, quite strong in fact. And yet, so far I'd seen nothing but what was essentially noise on the Kerberos SDR. This made me kind of wonder you know, what was going on? Why am I hearing a strong signal, but not seeing any bearings at all? So I pull over at the side of the road and find that I'd actually wired up the coaxes to the wrong antenna array. I was wired into the two meter array instead of the 70 centimeter array, which explained quite a lot. And now we start getting bearings and they're a bit all over the place. Um, this is often the case with this DOA system. Uh, you get a lot of multipath issues. Uh, and now I have a suspicion where I think the transmitter is. Uh, but, you know, I just want to try and drive around the area. 
I just get some confirmation instead of just going straight towards it. Uh, now, somewhere around this point as well, I switch from using the ICOM IC705, which gives me a upper sideband demodulated signal, um, to a VK3 YNG sniffer as the threat receiver. So instead of listening to the demodulated audio, I'm now just listening to a tone uh, which indicates the signal strength. There's also a number shown on the YNG sniffer, which is an indication of signal power and hence range. And from previous experience, um, I've learnt that what the various different numbers mean in terms of actual distance away from the transmitter. As I'm driving along the Mahousey Road here, I'm getting about a three on the um, sniffer, which means that it's not very, very far away. At this point, I've realised I've gone too far because the number was decreasing. And at that point, I'm pretty sure where it is. I head into the car park of the community centre and the number hits about a three and a four. And at that point, I get out of the car and go for a walk. And we can see that while there is a bit of a mess there, the bearings do kind of converge over the area where I'm currently sitting. And of course, now I'm just getting a lot of noise um, as I'm stationary. There it is. So that was the 70 centimeter fox. There were two more two meter foxes hidden that evening, but in the interest of keeping this video short, I won't show those. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to produce more videos like this showing you how we do fox hunting here in Adelaide. Thanks for watching and 7-3.